Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. Today's guest is Genevieve Peturo, a fellow New Yorker who is as full of passion today as she was when she started 20 years ago spreading the word about her story of purpose, passion, and pajamas. We talk about the one aha moment that changed everything for her, listening to your heart voice, finding cheerleaders, and acting on your dreams even in the face of fear. Here's a little more about Genevieve Peturo. Genevieve was a successful television marketing executive until she dramatically changed the direction of her life. She found her true purpose when a sudden voice inside her head challenged her life as she knew it. In 2001, she founded the hugely successful national nonprofit pajama program when a six-year-old girl's question changed her life forever and she jumped off the corporate ladder. Almost 20 years later, Genevieve's pajama program has delivered over 7 million magical gifts of new pajamas and new books to children throughout the U.S., Genevieve is now a best-selling author, professional speaker, personal strategy coach, and consultant, sharing life and leadership lessons she learned through her pajama program journey. Her book, Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas, How to Transform Your Life, Embrace the Human Connection, and Lead with Meaning, was released in August 2020 and is the winner for Inspirational Book in the 2021 National Indie Excellence Awards. She has been interviewed on and featured in many local and national media outlets, including Oprah, Today, GMA, The Early Show, CNN, Fox and Friends, Hallmark Home and Family, O Magazine, Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, and Parenting Magazine. Now get ready for an experience with Genevieve Peturo. Oh, welcome, Genevieve. I'm so excited to have you here today on my Wildspire podcast. And mm, so, I came across you and your work on a site called Podcast Guests, and I looked at your, at your description of what you do and what you talk about, and I thought your story is so beautiful and so powerful. And in fact, I want to read something that I read on your website that's just a little paragraph about it because it's so striking to me. And maybe you can tell me, you can fill in the gaps of the story after I do that, if that's cool with you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, Stephanie. So this is the paragraph that I found. One aha moment can change everything. Sometimes it's loud and clear, and sometimes it's in a little girl's whisper. I lost a lot of sleep over, over whether to jump off that corporate ladder 20 years ago. From the moment I knelt in front of that little girl, I knew my life would never be the same. My yesterdays, the way I knew them, were gone forever, and my tomorrows were a blank. That's a daunting place to be kneeling. It was. Yeah, so would you tell me a little bit about what that means? It's, so, it's a very dramatic and powerful paragraph there. Um, well, it was, it was everything that, that I wrote in that moment, and, and I'm still I'm haunted, not in a bad way, but I remember that, and I try to... I try to talk about it because it's it's a lesson for me to share with other people who are hoping to find their purpose or turn it into a career, you know, and I did it, but I did it um, making a lot of mistakes. I did it not knowing what to expect. And and that's that's how it felt like, like a very scary place to be. But I wanted to climb the corporate ladder from the time I was a little girl. I just wanted to be um, that single woman in a big city. And for me, that was New York City, you know, making my way up to that that office in the sky. And it went really against my traditional Italian upbringing. And my parents, I'm the first born and I'm a girl. So my parents expected me to have a family. Sure, they wanted me to go to college. But, you know, I know they wanted me to have a, a husband and children at, you know, what they considered a, a ripe old age of, you know, 24 
And I didn't have that dream for myself. You know, I, I wanted something else. I wanted that independence. And 12 years in climbing that ladder, I did have a great job. I didn't have any complaints, not one day, workaholic, single girl, you know how it goes. And one day in my apartment, I had this, this moment where I heard a voice and I know it came from me and I know it didn't come from my, my head. It came from the me in my heart and my soul. And I heard a, a question and I heard, if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? And Stephanie, it stopped me cold. And I realized in a split second, no, that I would be alone if I didn't reconsider the rest of my life. And I realized too, that that might have been trying, that nudging might have been trying to speak up, but with that fast paced craziness I was living, I didn't hear it. And I think a lot of us get trapped in our head voice first. And it's always scaring us out of doing something new and, you know, knocking down that nudge of, um, you know, maybe you should reconsider. And when I realized that I had to reconsider, then I thought, you know, there was something to my parents' dreams for me to have a family. They knew something. And I missed out, but maybe there was a way to bring children in my life. And I went to read in emergency shelters because I had night times after work. And I lived in a city where I read about the trauma of children who were taken out of you know, very uh, bad places that they lived in, taken out by police and social workers and taken to shelters for safety until who knows what. So I called and I was welcomed in. And I sat on the floor in my, in my, you know, my suit, embarrassing. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. And I sat on the floor and, and they brought the children in, you know, all ages, little ones, really up to maybe seven or eight. And it was an emergency shelter. So there were a mix of circumstances that they were, they were in. And I read in silence and it was so grounding. I felt at peace and it was just so different from what I had known. And I kept going. And then that aha moment that you read from my website, that little girl and um, her question just, just shocked me. And everything changed from, from that moment. Mm. So will you tell me, because I know people are listening who probably aren't familiar with your story, like what that question was and what, what that meant to you. Sure. Well, I brought books and I let them each take a book after I read. And most of the time they were so quiet. You know, some had been crying. I could tell by what they were wearing that they didn't have anything else. And what they had, what they were wearing was often soiled and or didn't fit right. And it was emergency, an emergency situation. So I got that and they were safe. And, you know, God bless all those wonderful staff who, who take care of those children as they're getting, you know, processed, which... I hate that word for, for the children. Um, and I wandered with the children as I went to the other room to go to sleep. I, I wandered around with them, followed Ted behind, and I peered into the room. And it broke my heart because it was just as bare as the room I read in. There were single beds or cots or futons. And the staff were lovely. They were helping the children up, you know, and, and making sure that they were settled but there was nothing to change into and sometimes more than one child on a, on a surface. And it, I had all these memories of my mom and bedtime with me and my brothers and my sister, each having our own bed, each having pajamas that my mom put on us, you know, having stories read and, and laughter and snacks and lots of kisses and hugs. And what I saw was such a stark contrast and the only thing that I managed to get out of my mouth as they were bringing me back to the, to the door to leave was, can I bring some pajamas next time? And the woman said, that's a lovely idea. Sure. So all week, forget my job. I just was using every, every reason, every excuse to get out and go and shop and buy as many as I could because I didn't want any of the children to be left out. And I wasn't sure who'd be there. And when I went back, I started to read the stories that night. And then I told them I had a special surprise. 
And I started to hand out the pajamas. I pulled out what I thought would fit the child in, in front of me. And a little girl halfway through this, this um, giveaway here, I showed her a pair of pink pajamas. And she was wearing pink in her lavender top, which was soiled. And her, her pigtails were lopsided. And she was silent all night. She sort of had a little dazed look on her face. And I, and I figured it was her first night there. And I said, honey, these are for you. And she just started shaking her head so hard. No, 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 no. And I, I didn't know what was wrong. I kept trying. And she just kept getting so upset and saying, no, no, no. But she wanted to watch me give them to the other children. So I saw her standing off to the side with a staff person who kindly waited with her. And I gave them to the rest of the kids. When the other kids got, got them and went into the bedroom, I went back over to her and I knelt down and I tried one more time and I rubbed one of the sleeves of the pajamas on her hands so she'd feel how soft. And I told her it was going to make her sleep feel better. They were just for her and they were pink because she likes pink. She's wearing pink in her shirt. And she looked at me and then she whispered, what are pajamas? And I, I couldn't believe I had to explain what pajamas were to this little girl. And after they took them and they took her and she put them on, she looked over and she gave me a little smile. And I, I did everything so I wouldn't lose it because I didn't want her to think she did something wrong. And that was the aha moment that just turned everything upside down. My motivation, my desire to continue the way I knew my career was going and I had to make um, some difficult decisions in the next, you know, days and weeks and months. Mm. I love that. I love that. What, what I hear in your story, Genevieve, is that you, you know, that you were primed for this. Like that question that came to you, that voice that spoke to you and said, you know, if this is the next 30 years, is it enough? Then there was some kind of, must have been some kind of answer like, well, Ah, uh, I don't know, or maybe no, right? Like something, mm -hmm. and being in that place of like, this is my life. Mm -hmm. This, this is my life, and then listening to those whispers from that place of actually opening up that question. Now, now, like, what else could there be? And I just hear your return to the things that that you loved, the things that brought that connection for you in your childhood. Um, family, the idea of children. Oh, children. I read somewhere um, that you're like, I still don't know why I, I went to volunteer at an emergency home for children, emergency shelter for children, you know, but it was that like you were listening to that voice. Right. Mm -hmm. And then being encountered by this being with the children. I think that sometimes we, we forget that. Uh, children remind us that presence that we can have when we're in the moment, when we're just connected, when we're just, we're not worrying about tomorrow and fretting about yesterday, but we're really just being, and kids sometimes bring us there. For some reason, we give ourselves permission, and you found that, and then said, yes, this is my next, this is my next third, like, this is what I want, not that, like this, and yeah. It's just beautiful that you were able to recognize it and then take that leap. So like, I'm curious about how this has evolved for you. Are you, still, are you still reading books to children? What does your life look like now? Well, pajama program is what I called it, another moment in, a, in the subway. I heard that phrase and I said, that's what it's called. Because I was wondering, what am I going to call this thing? I'm bringing pajamas and books to children all over the city at night. And is this a thing or is this, you know, and, and that popped into my to my head so um eventually you know a year or so later it became 501c3 and called pajama program and we just celebrated 20 years so for most of those years i was founder and executive director running the show and now um well, a few years ago i went to our board of directors and i said you know i want to write a book because the whole story is really about purpose and people over these 20 years have been asking, you know, you think I have a purpose or how did you do it? And I have a lot of lessons that I could share of things I did wrong and a few things I did right. And speaking all these years, you know, I think now there's a big need for people to find their purpose. So 
I'd like to give my executive directorship role to someone else and let's hire an executive director and I'll just be the founder and, and I'll make my way speaking and writing and helping people find their purpose. So 20 years now, 7 million new pajamas and new books we've been provided, we've provided, and we have 63 chapters around the U.S. So thankfully, the tens of thousands of people and, and companies and foundations who felt that little girl's pain and hurt responded the way I did. And in different ways, we band together and we are, you know, we are trying to do what we can to, to give these children love, even if they don't see us at their most vulnerable time. You know, good nights are good days. And if we can get them to feel better and feel loved, they'll sleep better, they'll wake up and be able to thrive, be able to feel that they can, they can manage another day. Mm. And just like that little girl made a difference to you in that moment, like sparked something inside of you, who knows how many little sparks you're igniting with the, with the work that you're doing with the pajama project and, and now with your book as well, reaching all these lives, igniting these sparks in them as well. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. I know I talk to people all the time who, um, especially now, especially after these 18 months, we've all gone inward and we're all pretty much decided, hey, this, this meaningful life is something that's escaped me. And I really want it. I really feel it's missing. I really feel that hole. And I think I have a purpose and I'd like to find out what it is and, and find a way to bring it into my life. And mm. I, I hope to be helpful to those people. Mm. So what does it mean to you? What, is, what does purpose mean to you? Like, tell me more about that. Sure. Well, I think it's service, but it doesn't mean you have to go out and run a nonprofit. It means that you honor this heart calling, whether it's an art form like singing or dancing or drawing, or if it's a, a career, maybe you love numbers, or maybe you, you love working with children and you want to be in the medical field, not necessarily a doctor, but maybe you want to work doing something to help children or seniors, whatever it is, it's giving it air, letting it breathe, taking it out of that, taking it off that back burner. We've all put those things that we think, oh, I could never do it and bringing it into the forefront and giving that gift to yourself. I talk about the slide or the jump. I jumped I jumped in, probably not the smartest thing in my book is I'm very honest about all the mistakes, but I, I was obsessed and I jumped in and there's a way to do it smarter than I did. And there's a way to slide that purpose and even sliding your purpose into your life a little in a little way. And I teach how to do that and start with three steps. Makes you feel different about yourself, about your surroundings, about life. It just brings joy to you that's contagious. It changes everybody in your life. If you just, if you love singing, take a singing lesson once a month, once a week. Yeah, if you like to be with animals, find a place that you can help out for an hour a week or an hour a month. And if you can't do it physically, if you can't get in that space physically, do some research. Just pour yourself into the internet and all the wonderful ways that people are discovering how animals can help humans or how to help animals. And just immerse yourself in that world any way you can, physically or um, via the internet. Read about it. Talk to people. Everyone's connecting. Connect with somebody on social media who is in your world and just say, I've always loved this. I wonder if you'd spare half an hour to talk to me about about what it's like to work with animals, to work with children, to be an artist. And it changes everything. It changes how you feel about yourself. It's a gift you're giving yourself. It changes how people feel when they're around you. It's such a contagious feeling of joy that it's it's impossible to believe that you went without once you feel how easy it is to, to bring that purpose from the back burner up front. Mm. Mm. I like that a lot. 
Um, I was having a conversation the other day, um, and the person I was talking to was saying, was re- relating how a friend of hers was lamenting about a disappointing daughter and asked this daughter, you know, well, what do you want to do with your life? And she said, I just want to have fun. And the person I was talking to said like, oh, that seems like such a frivolous purpose. And I said to her, I would answer it the same way. Like, I, I want to have fun with my life. Like, that's what I'm here to do. And having fun, not in the sense of distracting myself because my life is miserable and I feel like crap all the time, but having fun as in pursuing what brings me joy, creating the cool stuff that inspires me, spending time with people like yourself who have inspiring stories and are reaching out to help people change their lives. That's fun. That's my idea of a good time. And in what you're saying, I, I can remember talking to clients in the past who had cut themselves off from something that they really love and something they really desire. Um, a guy in particular who was in music, he was a DJ and he was, he liked it, but what he really wanted to do was pursue his music. What he really wanted to do was make music. And I said, well, do you have a guitar? He's like, yeah, it's probably all covered in dust under my bed. I'm like, please get it out. Five minutes, spend five minutes because the joy that you experience will trickle over into every area of your life and it will show the way. It's like it's following the breadcrumbs of that joy led you to the creations that have sprung from it and continue to. It sounds like it's evolving, like you're still doing it. It's a really yeah, beautiful you're thing. Right. You're right. You're right. It does. It spills over into everything and everyone. And that's the part where the, the service comes in. It's a service that we do to share our stories. It's a service to support each other's dreams. It's a service to be responsible for our part in this grand picture you know, of, of humanity. And by withholding what we love and our joy, <clears throat> what our, and our joy, it deprives other people of sharing theirs. They'll share if you share. If they see you take a chance and you know pull out your guitar, whether you're a beginner and you're making mistakes or you you surprise everybody with a beautiful lullaby, that'll empower them. That'll inspire them to say, you know what? I, I like to cook. I, I I haven't cooked in a long time. Let me try that recipe. It's amazing what magic happens when we serve like this. Hmm. Hmm, that's beautiful. And I think that a lot of people in my community will relate to that too, because all of us are really here to serve and help in some way or another. I have coaches and therapists and healers and hmm. entrepreneurs who really have a strong mission to change the world in some way. So it's very, it's very inspiring. It's enheartening. I think um, everybody wishes mm. they could change the world a little bit. You know, we all want more for each other. We all want the, to lessen people's pain. We all want to bring joy. We all want to be that person that makes someone smile. And I, I think, I think we, that we do us, ourselves a disservice when we withhold that. And so I, I hope I hope people who hear this will take a minute and smile at someone or or call someone that they haven't spoken to or or you know have a kind word for someone. You know, I mean after what we've been through, more and more people are doing it and, and it really goes a very long way for, for your soul, our soul, and whoever you know you're reaching out to. Yeah. I like that. And it's such a, it's a small thing. It's a simple thing. And it's truly powerful. It changes things. It changes yeah. things. And yeah. it's, it's just a ripple effect and it changes the world. Hmm. I love that. I love the idea of changing the world with human connection and joy. One yes. simple little moment at a time. Yes. So there was something that I wanted to ask you about because it came up in my life recently. Um. And I'd love to know how it lands with you. I used to say this years ago because, man, that what, you're, what you call the heart voice, that little voice that whispers and says, go do that. Check that out. This is what you want. You know, go there. And we drown it out so often because it's not practical or we don't know where it's taking us. And it seems scary. And if I listen to that, it's going to lead me down God knows what paths and who knows what's going to happen in my life. And, oh, no, like if I knew 
that I was going to be faced with, I follow that heart whisper, and then I'm going to be in that place like like Genevieve was, where my whole life is going to change up, turn upside down. Like oh, that seems really scary. At the same time, people are longing for that, longing for that heart connection, longing to listen to that voice. So I used to say to people, and occasionally still do. Listen to your intuition or listen to your heart voice, as you would say, even if it's wrong, as a way of saying, like, just do it, like, see where it takes you. But I'm wondering, like, how that lands with you, because I know it's kind of like, like, I don't want to be wrong, you know, and um, I I just wonder, like, what comes up for you around that when I say it? Well, first of all, if it's your heart voice, it doesn't say it once and go away. It's going to nudge you from time to time. And and people, people know, people know that that thing is, you know, over there and they know that they're honest with themselves, that they're pushing it down and they know the reasons. What's everyone going to think? I'm responsible for this and that. Everyone knows me as this. I know this better, you know, the devil, you know, than the devil you don't know. And I'm not good enough. How could I ever at this age change things or how can I ever show up? at a class to to learn guitar i'll be the only one i'll be embarrassed i mean i could go on we could go on right stephanie for a million <laughs> a million reasons we don't listen but that hard voice continues to nudge and i i do this with with people i, I want them to feel here forget this it's not this how does it feel when you're singing how does it feel when you're helping a senior at a senior center how does it feel when you're reading about horse therapy how does it feel what does it feel like generally people will say a high it's thrilling i start to cry they don't say it feels like i need to do a little research in my head and then maybe i i don't want that i want to know how do you feel when you're immersed in the activity or the reading of it and that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's a, it's a very quick way to find what's alive in you, find the, the whispers of your heart voice, mm-hmm. and start to follow them. Um, and it also is really interesting to me that people feel it when they talk about it. So it's not actually just doing the thing. It's what that conjures in them that they can actually be experiencing right now. And I think that's really, that's really powerful to note if it feels like for someone who they have, uh, like what they really want to do seems like it's miles away. Like that's a mountain that I don't know if I'll ever be able to climb it, but we've just proven that by envisioning it and thinking about it and talking about it, you can feel it now. You're already bringing it into your life. And whether you ever hit the summit of that mountain you can cultivate that and experience it every day. Um, What would you tell someone who's in that place? Like say they, they just really love, uh, like they want to sell their art. Like maybe they, they do their art on the side and they want, they have a dream of getting it out there. Like what would you tell them about that? Ask people questions, people who, who know my mistake. One of my big mistakes was I was embarrassed and afraid to ask for help. First, because I had a job and I wasn't telling anybody what I was doing because what, what the heck is this? I'm bringing pajamas and books to children. Okay, that, that's what I'm doing. I, I couldn't formulate it into anything other than I'm bringing pajamas and books to these children. And it was so emotional to me that I didn't want, I didn't want too many people to know. I wanted to protect it because I realized how it sounded. You know, it sounded, I don't know, silly compared to this corporate world I had. And I didn't want people to say it was silly or to to ask me questions. And I didn't have any answers. So ask, ask for people, ask for help, ask people who are related to whatever it is that you love, what it's like, what they had to do to get there, just to share and be honest to say, I've always loved to do it. I'm, I'm just thinking about it, how I could bring it into my life, even in the smallest way. Please, you know, do you have half an hour? I'd love to ask you some questions or hear about, your, what your day is like in that. And people love to share. I don't think anybody's going to say no to that, you know, to that question. If they're loving what they do, they want to share it. And the more information, the more 
educated you are about what opportunities there are. You don't have to be the best surgeon in the world to help a child who's sick. Maybe you'll find something along the way in that path that makes you feel like this is my purpose. This moment with the children, maybe visiting before their surgery, maybe bringing them a, a gift after, see what hospitals have volunteers do. There's so many ways, but you won't know until you start exploring. So be free, get over the afraid to ask the embarrassment of it all and embarrassing you know, and how embarrassed you would be if people found out you were inquiring about this when you're, you know, a big accountant somewhere. Ask, ask a lot of questions. People will give you answers. Hmm. This reminds me of a book by Amanda Palmer, which is called The Art of Asking. Yes. Oh my goodness. Beautiful yes. book. And she has just shown how powerful it is to be transparent and vulnerable and authentic with people and accessible, accessible, yes. like in a way that a lot of times we're afraid to be, mm. especially, you know, like I'm thinking New York, right? Like New Yorkers are like anywhere else. They have their, their human beings with hearts and souls. And yet because of the close confines, there seems to be a bit of a, well, this is a way that we create our boundaries and we don't disturb, but it doesn't take a lot to penetrate that. Like one moment of connection, right? So, right. Right. and use the way you spoke or what I've seen you write about human connection. I would love to, to know like what that means to you and like, why is that important? Nothing would have happened if I didn't speak up, if I didn't tell anyone what I was doing. I'd be, I'd be a female Santa Claus walking around with a sack of books and pajamas all by myself, bringing them around and not being able to really make a difference because how many pajamas and books could I carry every day by myself? So by telling people, first, I was afraid to tell them. I had some experiences with some naysayers, and I realized, you know, if I'm going to start to tell people, and if a couple of them are negative and start bombarding me with questions, or one, one friend who, you know, I thought, let me just sort of feel her out, and let's have a glass of wine, and she didn't know what was coming, and she was also a corporate girl, and I started to say what I had mentioned to you a few minutes ago. Um, you know, I had this experience. I went to a shelter and I read some storybooks to children and then I bought pajamas because they didn't have any. And this little girl asked me, what are pajamas? And I ha can't stop thinking about her. And I want to keep bringing pajamas and books to her. And I need to figure out how to jump off this corporate ladder and do that. And she looked at me like I had six heads and started asking me, like, why would you do that? You've given so much to 12 years you're almost there you have a great career can't you just do that once in a while do you think it's really going to change their lives and it was like boom 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 and i realized i needed to get my cheerleaders in order because they're going to help you up when some of those others push you down and by in being in that difficult situation it forced me to reach out and the more people i told it's the more people they told did you hear please, can you give me some new pajamas? I, I met this lady and she's bringing them to a shelter and it spread because when you speak from your heart, as you were saying, you connect with people, especially when you, when you tell a story, when you, when you speak emotionally about a story, about an incident that happened. And I didn't know the magic. I didn't know the power of the human connection, but it's incredible. How else would we, would we have 7 million pairs of pajamas and books delivered in, in 20 years, more than 7 million now. How would we ever have 63 chapters around the U.S. taking taking pajamas and books to children and reading with them? Never one woman. And, it, you know, in 20 years, I realized it's not the power of one the way I thought. So many people think, you know, the, only the big famous people who do something ma amazing and magical are blessed with this purpose. The rest of us don't have that. It's not the power of one that changes things. It's the power of one another that moves mountains and moves people. And that's the human connection. And we need, we need to embrace that. Mm. It strikes me as you're saying this, Genevieve, that you didn't start a business. You really started a movement, a movement that comes from the heart that says, hey, let's come together and do this thing. And it caught on because it came from it connected from your heart 
to each individual heart and, and kind of spread in that way. You were talking about contagion, like that there's something contagious about this, that when you're that on fire and, you know, I can hear it in the way you talk about it. You've been doing this project for, and all it's, offshoots, right? Wherever it's taking you for 20 years. And you still sound truly passionate about it. Like it has not dried up in you, this, this no. purpose. Yeah. No. And it's, and when I tell the story, I can see it registers as if I'm the little girl. She, she speaks through me. And when I tell you and you tell someone, mm. she speaks through you and she's touching lives through every person that hears the story, because it's a simple story. We can all relate to how there's a hole in all of us somewhere deep that can relate to her hole in her heart. We've all had the lowest of lows. We've all been lonely. We've all been afraid. We've all felt abandoned. We've all felt like we are, you know, we're not worthy. We've all had those moments and that connects with this little girl and the thought of this little girl having all those feelings is just so much for us to, to, to take on that we, we are moved to make something better for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it seems to me that it, the fact that this is around a child is the promise of, of healing that lost child that perhaps lives within us. Mm -hmm. and and knowing that like when i look at that child there's nothing wrong with her you know maybe she's a little scruffy maybe she's been had a few knocks but she's always been perfect there's a there's a story that i wrote because i i have a deep appreciation for story too and the, the power of yours is you're right it's in its simplicity and its heart connection where it comes from it still resonates through all these years and I, I wrote a story about, uh, you know, how we, how we look at this, this small child. And there's no doubt they're perfect. Like, like regardless of, of how they come out, you know, like there's something so innocent and beautiful. And then at a certain point, they grow and somehow believe that they're not. They're no longer perfect. They're flawed. They have holes. They have a mistake. You know, they, they, they feel like there's a hole in their heart but they never change. They're the same being. And that's still us. And I love the reminder of that. And what you're saying is that like, yeah, we can, we can make a difference there with them and also with us. It's, it's healing for all of us to do that. I think you're right, Stephanie. Hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, have you noticed, has your relationship with your purpose changed over the years? Um, it has, you know, at, in the early years, I met a, a great guy, you know, I, I didn't want to get married and have kids. I, as I said, I wanted to be that corporate girl, but I met a, a great guy. And the test for me was, I said, well, I'd better clue him in on my, you know, thinking here that I might change careers because he thinks he's getting involved with a career girl, two income family, if we get serious and all that. So I gingerly broached the subject and I and I said the same thing I said to that woman I'm thinking about changing my career because it turns out it doesn't really mean anything to me or anyone else and I met this little girl in a shelter and I told him and his first response was go for it and I knew I knew that he was the one because I had had a few naysayers and I was afraid you know he might be one but I guess I knew deep down he wouldn't be one. So he's seen everything, all the ups and downs, you know, and, and it's been um, not all roses, but thankfully everything worked out great and we are happily married. And because of that peace and being able to trust myself and what I feel that people will rally if you share what you need and you give back in turn, I've felt this, this response from people, not only did they want to help, but people wanted to know if they could find their purpose. If I had time to listen or, or talk or share. So 
that's why I wanted to write the book. And that's why I wanted to speak not only about pajama program and the start and the story, but the whole journey of what it means to find your purpose from the, the scary time when you don't know what to do through the ups and downs. That's a quite a roller coaster, I can tell you. And so many lessons. So I, I've been sharing that with being a purpose coach, I call it, and with the book and with speaking. And now I'm having a Find Your Purpose in-person summit in October in New York. And I think people are, are looking more now than ever for a way to, to express themselves honestly. It's been, it's been too long. Mm -hmm. And I talk a lot about fear because that, that holds us back. Most of the time, that's that's the word that people use, and, and I did too. And, you know, I, I tell people all the time, sometimes you just have to do it afraid. <laughs> I heard that on a sappy movie once, and you know what? I sat up on the couch, and I said, that's exactly it. Sometimes you just have to do it afraid. <laughs> that is a really, really beautiful point. Simple, right? Well, I used to say, I mean, I used to like the the variation of it, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yes. Not I, like yeah, not I'm like good. as a badge of honor, but right. who right. says that you have to be confident to do something? Right. You right. don't. Like right. you can just do it with shaking knees and still yes. do it. <laughs> yes. 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 And once um, you realize that you're going to feel the fear. It lessens the fear in a strange way. Ah, yeah. Like it's, it's okay. You don't mm -hmm. have to fight it. It's okay right. to feel afraid. Right. Right. It's, it's quite normal as right. human beings. I feel it probably almost daily, some form yeah. of it or insecurity right. or something comes up. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Knowing right. that it doesn't have to stop you, then it doesn't stop you. Right. Isn't that funny? <laughs> It's, it's, it's quite funny. And I come back to that sentence, this, my yesterdays, the way I knew them were gone forever. And my tomorrows were a blank. That's a daunting place to be kneeling. Like that is fear of the unknown classic, mm -hmm. right? That's and dark. what's mm -hmm. really awesome. funny is that that's every day. Like, honestly, I do not know what's going to happen to me, even in the next five minutes. Now, it looks pretty clear to me that we're still having a conversation in five minutes, right. but, but that's what my mind is telling me. But do I know that for sure? No. And then every moment is passing away. And yet, what I see you pointing to and living to the best of your ability in it and encouraging others to is following that heart voice in the moment, because when you follow that, it doesn't it doesn't, um, it doesn't follow the, I need to know exactly what's going to happen next of the head, right? Like it's not a straight line right. and making that switch can be a little scary. So like, I'm wondering what, what do you do when you encounter that again? Cause it just keeps happening, right? You're going to, you're doing something new now than you have been in this project and there's always something. So how do you navigate that, the heart and the head? Well, I learned through the beginning of pajama program that my head was fighting me. No, don't be stupid. You can't do that. You don't know what to do. You don't, you, know, you need money. How are you going to pay? All the reasons that our head talks us out of everything. But my heart was pulling me and this obsession was just taking over. And I realized in time that your head is not stupid. It sees, oh, gee, she's going to follow her heart. Well, I'm smart. So let me help. Might as well help. So then your heart leads and your head starts helping. It's funny, but it happens. So the, the thing that I've learned with my husband's help, because he does a lot of spiritual teaching and um, he writes transformative meditations and all of that, is it's in the quiet times. It's mm -hmm. in the walks. It's not when you sit down and you think, okay, I have to do this and I, I better think of it right now. Be still. And, and talk to yourself and just say, I'd like to be guided or I'm, I'm, I'm available. I am open. I'm just going to relax about it. And this is what I'd like to know. This is what I'd like to see. This is what I need. This is what I want to do. And it comes. Hmm. It sounds like your husband saw that happening in you, mm -hmm. which is why he could so clearly say, go for it. He did. And it happens mm -hmm. for all of us. The problem mm -hmm. is we don't 
stay still often or long enough. And we deprive ourselves of that inner voice that we have that knows, mm. that knows us better than anyone. And that knows what we're capable of, even when we think we, we, we aren't capable. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's very central to you. What uh, I explore with people in business is coming from that place more. And it's not that there's no place for the mind, as you're saying, like it gets on board. It, it does what we focus it on. And it's going to also do what it does. And it's going to look for patterns and make connections and, and do things like create scary stories for us and all of those things like, okay, it does that, but we don't have to listen, right? Like we don't have to let that stop us. I love that. I love that you've been finding that. Um, so I'm wondering, who does your heart right now most go out to? Who would you like to deliver a message to the most? I think the people right now, after these months of um, reconsidering the direction, the path they took, the ones that are so close to taking that daring step and at the same time so afraid to rattle their life and the lives of those in their life, they're so close to taking that chance and trusting themselves. You know, I, I, I would love to reach them. I, I'd love to offer, you know, to listen and to, to share and to talk because they know, they, they know if they're that close to making a decision or a change and they're afraid, they know what their heart is saying. And my heart goes out to them because they are so close and they don't know that it's just, it's just within reach. I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying that it's not scary and I'm not changing, not saying it's not going to change lives, but you can do it and everything can work out and you just need to trust yourself. And we're so bad at that. <laughs> so what is something if they're one of those people who's like so close and they're daring to make this leap, it feels like they're about to leap off a cliff, like, or, and they're, they're terrified. They're probably terrified because they could feel how big it is. I know that feeling too. Like there's something big. This is, this is life changing. I'm like, what would you tell them to, to help get them through that, to help get them to go for it when it does feel scary? Find some cheerleaders. Hmm. Um, I'm always available as a cheerleader. Reach out to me. I promise I will be a cheerleader. There are people in your life or maybe if you don't feel there are, there are people who are doing what you might want to do who will get it. And if you share your story and you are coming from your heart and you talk about how much it would mean to you and how much of your heart is, is crying out for, for this to be part of your life, those people are what, who will buoy you when you are feeling like you're drowning, when you're afraid to take another step. You'll have a few people who are your cheerleaders who you can call and depend on to say, I'm here. Talk to your husband, talk to your mother, talk to your kids, talk to someone in that business. Take the step, be honest, and let's, let's do one step at a time. And I'll be here no matter what they say, we'll talk again. All we need is that support from each other. And mm. it doesn't have to be a, a hundred people. It can be two or three or four but we all need someone to catch us when, when we're falling. Hmm. I like that. It brings us back to that connection again that sustains yeah. us. And there is, there were times in my life where I didn't feel like there was anyone to be that for me. But as I look back, there was always someone. Sometimes I didn't know to look for it. Sometimes I didn't recognize it. But even just looking, like opening your eyes and going, okay, like, give me a sign, send me, who, who supports me? Who's got my back? You know, the, there's someone. I can remember teachers that just, they, they maybe said these couple words and it just went into my heart and stayed with me. Like, Stephanie, you know, you're going to do great things. And I felt like this little loser of how am I ever possibly going to? But it fed something because there was something in it that was true. They were seeing something in me. That's what it is, like finding those people who see the light and say, yes, I see yeah. you. It's, and there are a lot of coaches who are brilliant cheerleaders. 
you know, that's another place that they can turn to you as a purpose coach, or they can find someone who, who helps you to incubate these ideas. There are so many people who love this stuff, you know, like we're on fire with it. There's something so intoxicating about someone who's passionate about what they do and the creation that they bring into the world. So I love that. Just, just ask, talk to people and you will find someone. And then what would you say when they encounter the naysayers? Because they may accidentally bump into some of those too. Oh, they will. They will. Um, well, if you expect that not everyone's going to say, what a great idea. <laughs> that's, half the, you know, that's half the battle with yourself. That it's okay. It's okay. Everybody has their, their own issues. Everybody is uh, afraid to make a change. I'm afraid. I'm always afraid, but I, you know, somehow I, I, I do it anyway. So if you know that not everybody's going to love your idea, that's okay. Not everybody has to love it. You have to love it. And, you know, you need some people who are going to support you, even if they're not overjoyed that maybe their life's going to change because you want to change your life, but they'll support you. Just need a few of those people. And you also have to realize you don't need to change your life overnight. All I'm suggesting is if you want to slide it into your life for an hour a week, an hour a month, just let it have some air. That will change so much. And that's a good baby step. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a very good reminder of baby steps. One step at a time. Yes. Our minds make this huge step this huge store. It, it isn't. Your entire life does not change overnight. Even though it feels that way, it doesn't. It starts on a path and you can always change the path. And as you said, there's an innocence about the, the heart voice is always whispering. It's just going to keep whispering. If you don't listen, you, it tells you go right and you go left. It's going to redirect you. It's going to tell you again. It's it's compassionate that way. It's kind that way. When we dense humans miss it, it's going to be all right. So right. like take the pressure off. It's already happening. This is what I see in people is that when, when there's something stirring in you, it's already alive. It's already happening. As soon as that, you notice that question of this is it, you know, came into your life, it was, it was already being created. It was already happening. And the more you were I mean, I could just see you, I imagine it's such a beautiful, evocative image of you with that little girl, you know, in the pajamas, that right there in that quiet was a place for it to come in, was a place for it to drop in the next step. Oh, go buy pajamas. It was a small thing, right? Like that was a small thing to do. I'm going to go buy some pajamas. And then it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew and it was organic. Like there's an organic, there's a, you can trust that, that will unfold, Yes, exactly. It, it, my husband always says it had a life of its own. And, you, you know, it, it, my purpose found me and, and I followed mm. it. I didn't, I, I didn't control it. I tried. We all try, right? But it, it went the way it was supposed to go. And um, thank, thank goodness I followed it. And I trusted it because there was magic there. Um, this was a gift. And I really wanted to make sure that I was um, cherishing it and, and giving it the life that it wanted because it was only going to do good things. Mm. Oh, I'm so grateful that you did Genevieve. I mean, it's, well, I can only imagine how much of a, of a difference it's made in the lives of these children and in the lives of the people who were able to help them. And now in the lives of the people who read your book and, and enjoy your coaching and your speaking and your message and hear your story. So thank you very much for taking that leap. On behalf of all of us. <laughs> well, thank you, Stephanie. Thanks for, for inviting me to share. I, I hope someone will share what they love and not be afraid. And if they are, do it anyway. Yeah. And where is the best place for them to find you, Jen, if they want to learn um, more? Yeah. Everything's on my website, including how to contact me. It's GenevievePeturo.com. Beautiful. And I will post links and share all of that as well. Thank well, you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are. <laughs>